Wrestling. Oh yeah. Welcome to another edition of Grind City Wrestling. That's right. I am Dustin Starr and boy oh boy do we have a lot to talk about today. Be sure to follow us on Twitter or your favorite social media network at Grind City Media. Take that subscribe button to Slap City wherever you're watching, especially right here on YouTube. Last week we previewed WWE Survivor Series and guess what? We were right. It was absolutely awesome. This week, I have a feeling that we're going to talk a lot more about WWE Survivor Series and the big return that came along with it. Devin is out sick this week, so we hope he feels a little bit better. Only just a little bit better. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is battle time. Introducing... My co-host and tag team partner, he is an A-lister, he's a business owner, and he's one of the baddest dudes I know. He's a ref inside the UFC cage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's E-Rock, Eric McMahon. What's up, E? What up, brother? Um, Man, we're going to get right into it, but it was like, no surprise to everybody, but returns are cool. Where it goes from here, it, we can debate that and we can talk about it, but returns are cool. I just want to say that. Like, whether you love them or you hate them, I know even even Devin, who says he's going to hate like a CM Punk, like, you do pop for returns. It is what it is. Especially when they're done right. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you uh, the story of how I watched it and all that stuff here in just a bit, but be, be sure to follow Eric on Twitter at E underscore Mac Life. Mac Life. What's new? Anything new? You know, just uh, we're in the grind of the season right now, right? So it's like, uh, I mean, you know, you're a business owner or you do work in Grizzlies. You're working hustles. You're putting on podcasts. You know, me, it's like I work for the Grizzlies. I'm game nights every night. I run my own businesses. I'm doing refereeing. I'm doing consulting stuff. It's just, and, and a husband and a dad, man. It is a busy time of year. It's absolutely full time, nonstop, twenty four hours a day, so seven is days a week. New? Everything, every day. Did you watch any wrestling this week? Of course, I watched wrestling this week. Um, I even tuned into Monday Night Raw. But uh, hey, listen, I'm still more pleased that uh, I like CM Punk. Like I can, like me and him are low key pals, right? And, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, I see him on average probably once a month at a fight show and you gotta start getting that camaraderie with him a little bit, dude. The one way to not get camaraderie with him is to talk wrestling with him. Well, no, you, you work for the freaking NBA. You do a UFC MMA podcast. There's so many other things that you could talk to him about. Just get that camaraderie to where you guys fist bump when you see each other. And then it turns into well, a little buddy hug. We see each other. We all right. All right. Out. We chop it up, but there's one thing I know not to talk to CM Punk about is wrestling. You got to wear him down a little bit, becomes buddies with him, and then throw in the little cheap, come join me on Grind City Wrestling. And speaking of Grind City Wrestling, today we do have a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about WWE Survivor Series, followed by a very, very strong Monday Night Raw in Nashville. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but... We had a couple of Memphis wrestling stars there. We had uh, Geo Savage took a big bump. And, uh, man, it was some kind of crazy match. Um, I can't even remember which match it was, but he did take a big bump. That's on the Memphis Wrestling Facebook. So big shout-out to Geo and Draco. One week removed from being revealed as the driver of the truck that ran over Flex. Also, shout-out to Nixie XS and Cassandra Golden, who were out there in Nashville as well so we'll talk about raw in nashville maybe a little bit of aew memphis wrestling returns to brighton tennessee this friday for a huge fundraiser for baseball and softball out there that's this friday night a lot to talk about but first what's the best wrestling you watched all week and why was it the big return had to be Either that or Monday well, Night Raw Orton's promo. Return. I, I, I popped for Randy Orton's return. Right? Now, now, I did say big return, but I didn't say which <laughs> one. Okay. Like, listen, man. I think you have to look at a guy like Randy Orton, and you can't have any more respect than for somebody like that. You know, he's coming off of major back issues. He's been gone a long, long time. 
and he comes just jack to the gills. Yeah! And he's our age, Dustin. Bro, I think he's older than us. Yeah, I mean, dude, you got to look at a guy. I watched a documentary with him years ago about like how he was a young and wild youth. And then he really took preparation and taking care of his body seriously and, and his stretching regimen and everything. And that's what it takes to become Randy freaking Orton. A guy like him that's well into his 40s, still c competing at the highest, highest level, looking the way he does. And for, for stuff like that, that, that supersedes storyline for me. I like watching him because I know or I've seen what he puts into it to get to where he's at. And I... I just have so much respect for somebody like that. It, it, you know, I'm sure he's blessed with great genetics. Let's not let's get that out of the way. You know, now, hold on. Let's listen. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was I was actually asked that yesterday on the radio about how is he looking the way he's looking. But let me tell you this: he's always looked awesome. Even back in his OVW days, believe it or not, Derek King took me under his wing and we went to Louisville and we wrestled on OVW television. A young Randy Orton was there along with a young Shelton Benjamin, Rock Lesnar, Dave Batista was known as Leviathan. Minnesota stretch, stretch, stretchers team, what were they? It was uh, the Minnesota stretching crew, I think, or something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was awesome, and we went to Randy Orton's apartment, and we literally ate everything in his pantry. This was like Randy Orton, you know, I imagine now he lives in this big lavish place, but he just had a little apartment. He was a developmental guy, just kind of like us, except for he was third generation or second generation, whatever the case may be. But but I remember him getting up and being like, man, I'm so fat. And he was like, doing, you know, and I'm like, what? That, you 17, 18 year old Dustin Stars looking at this guy like I'm 140 pounds. I'm looking at him going, are you kidding me? This dude would looked really good back then, but he was not satisfied with it. And so gosh, that had to be 20, 23, 24 years ago. And fast forward now, the dude looks better than ever. And diet is absolutely key. You prep for MMA stuff. I've done bodybuilding. Diet is absolutely key. This guy looks bigger and badder than ever. But, but it's not, but yeah, diet is majority, right? And that's hard, but also like the, the, the rehab that you have to do and not just from injuries, the day in day out, rehab and the, the the consistency to probably stretching cold plunges hot tubs you know yeah. all these things the proper amount of sleep eating proper amounts of protein right after you're done for your body to recover all dealing with all the anti-inflammatory stuff i mean people have no idea you get these fat nerds sitting on their couch that are just like whatever they have no idea oh lucky to be him blessed with good they the the work ethic that is involved to for somebody like him it, it it goes unstated, but it's it. But people like me and you, we know, we know, and and we don't do it to half the level he does. Right now, and he's for on anybody phone every freaking day. Yeah, now and that's that's the toughest part. But anybody that wants to talk about performance enhancing drugs or anything like that, those guys are tested. They're tested on the regular. And then also, let's say that somebody does get through the test. Do you think those are miracle drugs? Absolutely not. You still have to put in the work. You still have to eat. You still have to do all the stuff. So I don't care what anybody says. Randy Orton looks so awesome. And seeing him make his comeback, his his return to Survivor Series, and we knew it was coming, but it's kind of like when I saw Triple H return from quad surgery and oh, he took and just, off the jacket. Oh, my dude, gosh. Dude, he was twice the size, dude. Man, he just – I just – that's something that really hits home as a wrestling fan for me. And, and I tell you guys this all the time. I'm a body guy, but that makes me believe. Like, oh, my gosh, Randy Orton is really back. So that's the best wrestling that you watched all week? It is, dude. Just seeing – knowing what it takes to, at that age to look like that is a and, – and, you know, and to come back from a injury and being gone that long and not being complacent while you are gone it's all of that so that big return was the best wrestling that you watched all week best wrestling that i watched all week was another big return it was somebody that we had been anticipating returning for a long long time and when it happened the place went absolutely crazy our truth is back <laughs> Dude, they are great. Dude, our truth segments are so good. Our truth being back and just hearing the crowd go crazy during that pre-tape 
And then to hear Triple H, I don't know if you're a nerd like me and watch the media scrum, but I watched the media scrum, the press conference, and and Triple H was talking about the importance of our truth. Does this guy ever age? He still looks the same that he did back when he was in TNA as the NWA World Champion. Our truth is back, and that's the best wrestling that well, I watched hey, all week. Let's fast forward to the 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 Monday night, the next night when he's laying around with all the Twinkies and he's got the the powder all over him asking to be on the war games team and they're like that was night last uh, night dude his segments are just dude they're so they're they're exactly what that show needs yes it's the comedy element that uh, that every show needs you need to be able to laugh at something the only thing is i wish that they would use our truth's talent inside the ring because the dude is really really good but he's got his groove here looks like he's sticking around I, with it's, wwe it's not needed. You don't think he's having the time of his life making money Absolutely. just doing that? Absolutely. All right, so let's talk a little bit about WWE Survivor Series, and then we can talk about Monday Night Raw or go wherever you want. But huge returns. Randy Orton made his return at War Games. Before that, it was our truth I actually had to leave Dave and Buster's. We watch at Dave and Buster's. The place went crazy during all this stuff. But I actually had to leave during the men's war games match because we had a taping the next day and all that kind of stuff had an early morning or whatever. So I'm actually on my phone watching as my father-in-law is driving and he's kind of listening and I'm watching. And when the war games match was over, it's like, oh, okay. And then as it's going off, the music hits. And I go, wait a second. And then I saw the fists, the X on the fist come up on the jumbotron. So I actually clicked, clicked my phone just to make sure that I wasn't like on something else, that it was still live. And it was, and CM Punk came out like the last 30 seconds of the show. He didn't do anything. He That's why it wasn't the best return for me. And the people went crazy. So like, that's how they ended Survivor Series was with the big CM Punk yeah. debut, return, whatever you want to call it. So that's where I watched and it. And so smart doing it in all states. You know what I mean? absolutely so but let's can we fast forward now to monday night well first yes but first let me tell you uh who's who told you so who's been calling uh, I, this i mean everybody since he uh, left aew i've been talking about this since he left aew i mean and I, it I, happened i've been hitting the head a lot dustin i i, I don't remember that <laughs> yeah right but, uh i believe you i've never known you to be a liar so i do believe you on that I and, and you you guys. Have, I mean, you, listen you i i know you have been saying it i don't remember how far it dated back um but do you think people care that was going to be a question I was going to ask because I right, did send you guys a text. Talk about Survivor Series, so. I sent you a text. No, I sent you guys a text and I said, will CM Punk pop a rating on Monday Night Raw? 100%. And I, what did I put? 100%. 100%. And he did. So Raw went from 1.4 million to 1.8 million. And that was just the overnight rating, which is. How did they calculate that? Is that an average? Is that an average for the whole? That is that is the average. So we'd have to go back and look and see what the final segment did. I was actually surprised that they didn't lead the show with him because you know that's why everybody was tuning in. And I think and they, they would have that first him. hour commercial free. So I think they were in my head. I was setting it up, and then Randy Orton comes out in the first segment, and I was not disappointed. Right, right. I mean, everything is clicking right now with WWE, with the returns. Randy Orton, CM Punk. You know, you have Jade Cargill right around the corner. Sasha Banks rumored to return at Royal Rumble. Who didn't see that coming? There's been so much going on. So CM Punk comes out. He cuts the promo. His hair looked a little bit different. His beard, although it was still a little gray, it was trimmed up real nice and neat. He actually dressed a little different, too. He had the white sneakers on, the jeans, the T-shirt, kind of more of a little more of a hip CM Punk, a little more put together than the last time we saw him in AEW. And then he cut a promo that has gotten mixed reactions online. And I think the reason that trash, mixed like, listen, that was trash. Can we just say it? Not mixed reactions. It was trash. Gary Parrish thought that the, the comeback on Raw was flat, that Nashville did not care. 
And I think Chris Vernon and Devin talked about it as well, is that it just wasn't the same when it was in Chicago, but you did not like the promo. Tell me why. Well, first off, I go back to what I said about CM Punk, albeit personally a very nice guy, right? With all my interactions. This is not personal stuff. This is us judging not a television yeah. show. Okay. Nobody cares. Outside, it was, and I said this, if you date this back to when, when he came back, uh, what was it? A year and a half ago, uh, the night before WrestleMania, or the week before WrestleMania, trying to steal their big shine, when AEW popped Randy Orton out in the All States, uh, or no, that was the United Center at that time. He sold out the United Center. Um, people went crazy, and I said about after I noticed after about a week, it was just trendy to chant CM Punk, but nobody really cared. That's what I think this is. It is trendy to pop and chant CM Punk. It's part of the fan engagement. Just kind of like people have more fun with this, right? Or yes. what, whatever it may be. It's part of the fan engagement. But if you're going to say, are they going to hit a better number because he's headlining WrestleMania? I'm going to tell you no, because I don't think people really care. I still guarantee, I could put a stamp of guarantee that Brock Lesnar would always pop a better rating headlining WrestleMania than CM Punk would, even coming back. I, I totally agree. And and then the, then the promo was trash on top of it. There you go. So you did That's not like the promo. Well, well, all right, so let me give you a little bit of mine, and then I'll ask you why. I felt like that I didn't believe a word that he said. Yeah. I thought, I thought the promo was good, the way he delivered it, the way he sold it to us. If you did not know the history behind the scenes of CM Punk and you had no reason to like or dislike him either way, I thought that the promo came off very, very well, that he's home. But guess what? Most of us wrestling fans know what happened. We know how he feels. We know that he went to the other company and had to bail because the grass is not always greener on the other side. We know that. So that's the problem that I had with it. I kind of thought we were going to get some of that scathing CM Punk. Not necessarily talking about AEW, but maybe talking about WWE, right? But I just, I just did not believe the promo is the thing for me. If he were to have come back and said something to the effect of, you guys all know why I left. I don't regret it. I'm here to show everybody that I'm the best in the world. And I thought that I could do that in the other organization, but you know, they don't have the reach. They don't have the audience and I'm here to show it against my better judgment. I'm back here to show everybody I'm the best in the world. I, I could get behind that. Something that effect. I could get to back to the effect. I could, what I was really hoping he was going to say was something to the effect of, Hey, now that I know that, that Vince McMahon sold out his majority share to Endeavor and TKO, I'm back now because now it's different. And now I can get behind it and he could like bury like Vince McMahon or something like that. Right. That would have been cool. I think all these scenarios would have been better than I'm home. He literally came out in AEW and called them the nastiest things in the world. Said that it yes. was, I forgot some of the things that he said, but it was just so like vile his feelings towards WWE that now he comes out and he says, Hey, I'm home. Well, if you're if you're if you're a batter, if you love being abused to, to his words, then you're you're glad to be there. Shut up. And I'm not saying WWE abused him or anything like that. That's him. What he was saying. And then he's saying now he's home. Give me a break. It was so phony. It was. It was so phony. I thought the same thing. And I guess it'll be interesting to see where they go. But if you look at where they're going right now, he did not lead off Monday Night Raw. He did finish it, so that's like a main event spot. But also, Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins are into it. I know the internet went crazy about Seth Rollins for real being upset, and he really wanted to knock but out Mike CM Cole Punk and all really that. really could hold him back. Right, like Michael <laughs> Cole could really hold. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but they have Drew and Seth now going at it. That kind of leaves Punk. Punk did mention that everybody was happy that he's back. Well, maybe except for one person. So he did allude to the fact that that Seth Rollins, the world heavyweight champion, had an issue with him. But as of right now, it does not look like he will be put right into the title picture because of Seth and Drew. And I like that. Make him earn it. First time that we see CM Punk in the ring, I think it'll be Royal Rumble. I think there's going to be a storyline that's building up for WrestleMania because look at the Royal Rumble at this point, man. You're going to have CM Punk. You're going to have Randy Orton. 
there are so many awesome guys there. Drew is one of those guys. All these guys in the in the Royal Cody, who's going to win it? So it's going to be literally the who's who of the Royal Rumble. But what is the first yeah, thing in line for Sam Punk? Star power of the Royal Rumble and all these guys have a, a, a legitimate claim to being the next guy. I mean, it, 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 let, let's be honest here. The shelf life on CM Punk isn't that long in the WWE. I don't think so either. So they're they're billing him to Mania, and then maybe he'll spot sh spot here and there afterwards. I want to show you something. He's not going to be a guy with a long reign, a long run. Look at this. 2013 and 2023. Triple H in the middle. CM Punk, Seth Rollins, Cody, and Randy Orton. Look at Cody, man. Yeah. That's the shield, uh, Seth Rollins, compared to the World Heavyweight Champion. But 2013 compared to 2023, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Just got to keep grinding it out, man. These guys are so much bigger stars now than they were back in the day. Anything else you want to say about CM Punk? Because we could probably talk about him the entire episode. But I got a couple of other news bites that I want to hit before we get out of here. I just I just don't think that people care. I think it's trendy. I think it's it's fan engagement. I think they got the WWE got what they wanted. They got the 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 clicks. Like, and let's 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 be honest, everybody. These clicks are generating huge revenues. They're doing a lot of things just for those clicks. They could care less about storyline moving forward. I mean, they do, but I'm saying they're a path of revenue for them is in that social media click realm. So it's they're getting what they want, and it is what it is there. Highest viewed Survivor series of all time. Highest gate for Survivor Series of all time. Highest merchandise revenue for Survivor Series of all time. And the CM Punk Survivor Series return was the most watched ever on social media for WWE. And remember, The Rock just returned a couple of months back and he broke that record. So there is definitely something to CM Punk, no matter how you feel about him. I've got some random notes here. Okay, Britt Baker. I want to talk about her for just a second. She sent out a tweet and I will read it to you right now. The tweet says, Tonight's AEW Dynamite, MJF, live promo, seven minutes. Christian Cage, live promo, 10 minutes. All of 2023, Britt Baker, live promo, zero minutes. They had her push to the moon. She was one of the top stars, probably one of the pillars of the company. And then they just took their foot off the gas. This seems like to be a trend with AEW if you look at it. You've got Thunder Rosa, Wardlow, Britt Baker, these people that that started there and were built up and then all of a sudden just went away. What gives? Business. But Britt was, Britt was one of the faces of the company there for a minute. Right, but here's the deal. We've always said collectively that their women's division wasn't in nearly in comparison to WWE's, maybe they know it. I don't. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a shoot. I don't know if it's a work. Um, but listen, man, there's very smart people. Contrary to what all you nerds out there believe, there's very smart people running these companies. Now, me and Dustin could tell you firsthand that maybe executionally on day of show, it's a little bit of a hot mess. But still, they know where they're going. They know why they're going there. And they know eventually how they're going to get there. Right. Then they speaking, feel as it is. So it's business. Business. Yes. And speaking of business and speaking of hot mess, QT Marshall has released a statement that he is resigning from AEW. He had a lot to do with behind the scenes. He had a lot to do with the training at the Nightmare Factory. He's Cody's guy. He was tossed off of collision with his uh, QT TV or whatever it was because of CM Punk. So now QT is leaving. There's really only two places to go, but one that you really want to be at, and that's with your friend Cody. Does QT leave AEW and follow CM Punk to WWE, the same guy that had him thrown off collision? Maybe in a behind-the-scenes role. He ain't big enough. Like With all the star power, there's – there's not enough time to go around to build him up. No, Nobody knows him. And speaking of star power and building people up and talking well, about collision too. 
Oh, I totally agree. Okay. Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks was seen, and there's a photo of him in the ring at the Performance Center. Jade Cargill took it and posted it. So now Ricky Starks is in a WWE ring at the Performance Center. Here's a guy that they have pushed on television. Here's a guy that they pushed on collision. Here's a guy they just put the tag team titles on. He's had victories over big AEW superstars. How does Tony Khan feel sitting there with looking, scrolling through his phone and seeing Ricky Starks, one of your tag team champions, at the Performance Center? He's probably thinking, I shouldn't have poked the bear. <laughs> You know, everything that 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 he's feeling right now, he'd done to WWE for the last three years. Ricky Starks to WWE. Well, Ricky Starks was a star. We have been saying that for a couple of years yeah. now. Dude, he's just got that it star quality to him. He definitely does. And All he right. looked like so, a superstar. Even when me and you were there in person at Collision, like even just standing up, you're like, there's a presence about this guy. He has a presence. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's my random news and notes to go along with our Survivor Series and WWE Raw. Did I leave anything out? Uh, no, but I do want to double back on something you talked about a couple weeks ago about the uh, the, the WWE uh, Superfan documentary. Watched yes. it. Loved it. It was amazing to watch. And it's hard as a like, it was hard not to, I'm not going to say get emotional because I didn't get emotional, but it's not hard not to get it in the feels because that was the era me and you grew up in. And to see I was going to ask if you cried because it there are some stuff there that really do tug at the heartstrings. It, it, it does target the heartstrings because they did a, such a great job in showing what, how much it meant to him. And then to lose that and his mother all in the same month and then and then not having his mother gone and then not having WWE back. Yeah, that, I mean that was tough to watch, man, but it but uh WWE's that's why they're WWE man they came they brought him in they made him the first official super fan gave him the belt you know and it was so great to see all the wrestlers even that didn't know him saying I remember you from my childhood I watched him in the crowd I remember when Sid Vicious beat Shawn Michaels and I had a really good connection with Sid because he's from here you know and so when he won the title and Vlad was dabbing him up and all that kind of stuff I was first looking at uh, Vlad's biceps I was like holy <laughs> that guy needs to be in the ring. Anyways, all right. So WWE Hall of Famer and Memphis wrestling legend, the Boogie Woogie Man, handsome Jimmy Valiant, is coming to Memphis. Check this out. Hey, handsome Jimbo from Memphis is coming home. You know, Grandma Valiant, she still lives down. She's 114. She thinks it's my birthday all the time. I might have to eat another one of them uh, birthday pies. Hey, stop. Hey, Dustin, stop. You better call a band because they're going to be born one kind of ball. Old Town Jubilee, voila. It's going to happen. It's going to happen on December, December the 10th. And I want to tell my people, my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss this one because Boogie Woogie Man is coming home. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Grind City Wrestling. What's it, Daddy? Here's some Jimbo's so cool. town. He's so damn cool. He is. He's so cool. Uh, handsome Jimmy Valiant is like 80 years old and still looks He's like, like he, in Grandma Boogie. <laughs> man, he is like, Grandma Boogie is 114 years old, baby. Anyways, Handsome Jimmy Valiant's coming up. That's going to come up on Sunday, December 10th. Ringside are sold out, but you do need to be in the house here at the Wrestle Center. Get your tickets at MemphisWrestling.tv. I've had so many messages, Eric, of people that have items that they need to be signed because Jimmy Valiant has not been here in probably 15 years or so. But anyway, that's coming up on December 10th. E, what's going on this weekend? Dude, I don't know what's going on tonight, let alone this weekend. <laughs> no, I can go coach some jiu-jitsu matches. There's some super, uh, you know, there's some super fights that uh, I got some of my um, teammates competing in and I will be in their corner coaching Saturday night. Sounds good. All right. This Friday night and Saturday morning. Saturday morning is 9 a.m. instead of 11 a.m. on Action News 5 Plus. 11 p.m. on Friday night is the premiere of an all-new Memphis Wrestling. Last week was winner takes all. Congratulations to the boss, Tim Bosby, for becoming the internet champion and Mackenzie Morgan for retaining 
the women's championship this week there is a big surprise announcement that's going to lead off memphis wrestling so you putting your hair no it is not it's a lot worse than that (laughs) okay so stay tuned anyways i am dustin star he's e-rock eric mcmahon and this was grind city wrestling cue the cm punk music no wait we can't copy trademark (laughs) so long everybody